Hello guys, today we have another live cast game. I found a lobby with a bunch of high skill players and decided to start watching them. I reached 32 TS recently and I want to chill again, some being chilling. I just want to sit back and watch some games instead of being in the sweaty games. It's been, it's getting stressful when it's, you're like so high ranked and you're just like dealing with these, <laughs> these kinds of games. Uh, but anyways, I found a lobby. We've got like a really high skill lobby. Like the lowest here on both teams is 24. And we have 40s on both teams. Mr. Captain Jack Sparrow and Flash are in this game here in these positions. Now, someone did say that they don't like how I zoom in and out. But uh, I, I'm not sure if I can help you with that because that's just how I like to, to, to uh, look around in the, the map. I like to zoom in and out to see what's going on. So, yeah, these guys are just uh, going to play their game. I mean, there's a lot of spectators in this game anyways. Like, yeah, a whole bunch of spectators. This is, it's a high-level lobby. A lot of high-level players have been playing tonight, so... It's attracting a lot of people to watch. So I did let this, like, sit out and let it load up for a while, but it's just taking a while to get started here. So in the meantime, um, I could maybe talk about the map. We're on Coombe Valley. It's a... Coombe Valley, yeah. It's a very common, very popular ABA map. Um, on this map, you have six frontliners and two backliners. You can see that both teams are doing this meta here. Um, the reason is because you need the, the, the starting bank and the production of these players to hold the mid here. And you need these two players uh, to hold the flanks on you know all four sides here. Uh, these hills are often very hard to take uh, just because your 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 calm is going to want to fight in the middle here or on the bottom here and if you do send your calm up here you get you're vulnerable to attacks up here by the enemy calm like so so both cons will go up here and then on the hill like it's it's like whoever can get established first because it just takes so much to, to remove the turrets up here that it becomes very difficult uh, recently I played in this actual lobby but like that was a couple hours ago. Uh, I played in this position, fighting against this position. Uh, when you're on these hills, you're going to go bots because uh, vehicles can't actually get past these uh, this this little passageway here. For some reason, the vehicles can't move through here, even though it absolutely looks like they can. They can actually go through here. So if you have vehicles here, they're going to have to go all the way around like that. And most people aren't willing to deal with it. So they just uh, build a bot lab and they fight with that. And thus, rocket bots here are really important. I, I narrowly won that because I had more rocket bots. My rocket bots were late to the front, but I had more of them, and I microed them, and I won. Uh, and that was the that was what happened there in the last game. But I'm just finding things to talk about because uh, <laughs> these guys are taking a long time to start. I feel like I should um, turn off the spectators here, just because there is a lot of spectators, and they're going to be chatting a lot. Yeah, we'll have only the players talking here on the top here. All right, they're finally starting. Oh, what is this? I don't know what that is. Someone did a drawing there. Ooh, so many spectators. Okay. Yeah, we're getting started. There's going to be six frontliners on each side, two backliners. They're going to go eco. Uh, someone on the backside will get the air, probably. Uh, we'll, we'll probably see air. These are high level players. They love their air. When you're in high level lobbies, they love using air. Uh, especially Cortex players, will, they'll you know, almost certainly see some shurikens flying around because they, they just use those shurikens so well. That's what they love to do. So we have Flash, very well known uh, player. It looks like he's going win this game. And a bot lab, most likely. Over here, we have, yeah, I, I'm going to guess most people like bot labs. Uh, here's a vehicle plant. What do we got up here? Yeah, bot labs. I'm gonna expect a bot lab over here. And yeah, more bot labs. No factory just yet. He's uh, choosing to move his comm up, which I think is a little interesting, especially when you're moving that far. Uh, let's see, bot lab and another bot lab. We'll see what factory he builds. There's only one person going vehicles right now, but when you're in a high level lobby, uh, people really like building second T1 factories, so we might see that later. So they'll, they'll probably do some tech switches on the front line to um, 
vehicles probably to get their artillery out. I, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about this. I usually think um, frontline bases are just uh, not advisable. Yeah, now he's going vehicles here. I just think it's not not uh, advisable. I feel like you would rather get your base production up earlier and then you can have your troops and engineers get all this ground for you. All right, we got some Tikaras, some grunts coming up here. Grunt on the other sides too, but they're they're fighting the column. I think they got a mech there. That's really good. The ticks are running by here. Looks like one mech is going to go down so far. Yeah, that that hurts. Looks like another mech might. It's close. Yeah, he's kind of run away. Uh, tick goes down there. I think a tick got cleaned up over there. So some damage on both sides so far is like one max for one max. Uh, we still got one tick in the back line here. He might get this max here if he pays attention, um, or or a max up here. It's kind of, but it's usually hard to uh, micro everything. But this is flash. He might, yeah, he'll micro this. It looks like he's gonna get that half a max basically to waste the engineer's time. All right, we got comms going to the middle. The right side is going to get the better uh, midline here because their comms are more forward. That means they can just hold the middle here. Uh, they can put the turrets up first, and then their anti-turrets can come up behind, and uh, these guys can't push down the turrets as easily. Like Once these comms are established with their turrets, it's just impossible to take them out unless you sacrifice your own commander. I feel like... Uh, this is not so good because he's like exposed like this comm could literally just walk up a sacrifice to this enemy comm and then he's just he's just a hundred percent behind we might see that because uh high level players like to do that <laughs> that happened to me one time i think either today or yesterday and it was very very angry <laughs> yeah, yeah it, it feels <laughs> it feels extra bad I guess that's why I like the have only turrets at the front, so the Khan can't just walk into your base. All right, we got pings going out in the back here. The, tur the tick is still alive, and I think he ran around and got some more mexes here. So, two kills, two mexes. That's likely what he's gotten. So, Flash doing his very good high-level player micro here. Oh, he's approaching the front line. What's he gonna do here? I think he's just had that queued. He's gonna react. Yeah. Didn't take too much damage. Oh, he did take a decent amount. A third of his HP. Now he's going to get established with his turrets. No one's electing for the, the high ground just yet because it's very annoying to deal with it. Okay, we got Contraption here. It looks like he's got the better position. The calm is just absolutely not present, and so that's just going to allow him to creep forward with turrets. Oh, that, that mechs was uh, taken out by that grunt. It was like perfectly in line so the c commander couldn't shoot through it. But now that's going to mean he's going to get the turret up and he's going to deny one mechs uh, from the opponent and he's going to be up a mechs like relative to like the mechs down the midline. So like this mech should have been in his possession, but it's not. So I'm going to say favored for left here and favored for right up here because now he's denying this mechs and he'll get it soon because it's in his territory or in his midline. Favoring, yeah. Is that an aggravator? That had to be a missed micro because aggravators can always outrange these sentries. I think the hills got in the way of that. Ooh, we got a calm going. Purple. He's teching up. That's the typical tech stuff. That means he's probably going T2 right now. He might be the first one, and the other team is close behind. Another third one. Ooh, I think that was a calm trade. Now, when you're behind like this, that might actually be the uh, correct choice because if you just let this play out like this, um, you're you're gonna be at a disadvantage by a max, but like uh, by a max. But by taking out this commander, you sort of deny their entire like advantage and you can if you win this reclaim, you just a hundred percent turn the battle in your favor. And Pink has no troops here, like. It's just this one grunt and it just got cleaned up. Does he have res bots or something? Yeah, there's a res bot going. I think that's going to be in favor of right now. That was a that was a good good comp play. Like, yeah, that's very good actually. Uh, some more grunts coming in. Nah, he's getting outnumbered by the aggravators. Yeah, that's a very good comp play. Ooh, blue flash is coming in to eat the comp too. So that's two players that are going to get 2k up 
approximately. Somehow damage uh, got damage uh, damage got done here by glitzes uh, on flash. Three mexes. It looks like some constructor or power generators. Pink's um, grunts are still just running around everywhere. But these two cons, man, that's that's 4K to the right side. That is uh, very significant at this six, not even seven minutes into the game. That is very significant. For the right side i am going to say the right side is favored to win <laughs> based on these uh, positions they are winning the top lane they're winning the bottom lane um and they're more or less even around middle but they got the 2k uh flash is gonna have to rebuild but like you know with that mass injection i think he can do it just fine do we see a t2 factory from this guy no that's a little interesting he also doesn't have his back mixes yet purple does have his so Maybe these uh, these guys were a little bit squandered. Is this going down? What's happening? Why is this going up? Does anyone see this? <laughs> I thought it was going up for a little bit. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> is that Winter Gaming in the Spectators? <laughs> oh, it is. <laughs> we have Winter Gaming in the Spectators, so... You know, I, I didn't intend to be a winter feature, but I guess winter is here this time. <laughs> he, he always ends up showing up in my videos for one one reason or another. It's just it's just just because like I like to watch his games sometimes, and then those games end up being really good, and I just end up making videos on them. Okay, we got another con explosion, double con explosion here. We'll see who gets it. I think the left side is gonna get this one here. Three comms? Is that what they're saying? The other spectators. Three comms, yeah. Well, I mean, this is the third comm, probably. I think they'll be able to get it. Yeah, I think the left side will get it. So that evens the the loss down here. We got some. Ooh, this. Look at this. Ford factories, guys. I, I think it's just so risky. I mean, look at this, dude. You just lost your like 700 mass factory in your comm explosion. You have no like basically no protection at home. Although he did win T2, so. We'll have to see how this plays out here because <laughs> that is very greedy. There is, there is literally no defense. Okay, there's literally no defense. Um, these, there's no tanks here. It's just artillery, though. I mean, well, these ticks could still wipe like so much of this area. Like, it's so risky. All right, things are definitely turning in left's favor here. Um, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> High level game. It's gonna be up and down. It's gonna be hard to predict who's actually gonna win. Especially early on, like, I don't know. Ford factories, guys, I just think it's uh, usually pretty bad. I mean, like, what are the odds that this uh, factory goes down? Like, I'm, I'm gonna say it's like... I'm gonna say it's like a 75% chance this factory gets annihilated at some point in this game. Oh, yeah, 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 those mexes are going down. Pink is pushing up. He's pushing in his vantage. He doesn't see enemy units contesting the body, so that's probably gonna make him feel more, um, aggressive. Because it doesn't look like he's going T2, so he's not feeling passive, he's feeling very aggressive. And dude, there's absolutely nothing up here. He's at 91, or 94 power output. Oh man, feels bad, man. He's calling out for help. Uh, yeah, 100%, he needs help up there. <laughs> I actually think it's good to uh, chat with your team and tell you what you need, because if uh, the enemy lets this get wiped, you know, it's just more damage for your team. Like, you can probably assist your teammate and deal with this, or like push him back or something. Uh, it could be that right might just uh, collapse now because they might be. It looks like they're sparse on troops on the upper half here. They're winning bottom but losing top. Seems yeah. Oh, that's a lot of, a lot of mass on the field for pink here. Two thousand versus four hundred here. <laughs> Interesting. He's electing to build walls here, which is a little strange. I I'm not a, like a big wall fan. I don't like using walls in this game. Oh my god, he's got like he's also got mines, so interesting strategies. We see mines, dude. Mines underappreciated, I think, a little bit. But I feel like the cost of mines is too much, but Oh, these are actually much lower than I remember them. Or I remember these used to be five. But it looks like these got buffed possibly. They have a much lower energy cost now. So that might actually mean mines are actually pretty good. What is the uh, energy cost for medium mines? Stealthy. Uh, cloak cost one. Yeah, mines are buffed. Oh, oh, I didn't notice that. Oh, I remember the power drain used to be five, and I was like, that is just insane. That was just crazy. 
<laughs> five five energy per second. But with one uh, with one per second, like you can spend a windmill and get five mines out, and that that's like really good. Thirty seven. Like the the mass trade for a medium mine is actually pretty good now. Actually, I should uh, start doing that. I didn't know mines are buffed. <laughs> this replays. <laughs> this cat live cast is teaching me things. I guess. Ooh, I I don't think right side is doing too well though. I, like I said, I, I was looking at the map uh, number of units on the field. There's just not enough on the right side. So, and that means this reclaim field, two thousand almost gets uh, swept up by the left side most likely. Uh, flash. I mean, like, just all the players on the right side here just don't have enough units on the field right now. Especially with this guy going T2, like, these dogs need to put in work. They're getting some damage here. No kills, but, you know, it's dissuading him. Ooh, what was that? I don't know what that was. Whose con was that? I can't tell. Okay, it looks like Pink did a misplay here and blew up his own calm and possibly some buildings. I, I couldn't tell. We're missing things. Like I say, there's always so much stuff happening in an 8v8, you can't actually see everything all at once. But now nah, there's just so much stuff in the front here, and these are not the right units to deal with this. There's there's oh, hardly anything. The right side, the backliners need to send out units. We got fiends coming out here, but it doesn't feel great when your frontliner is losing your frontline is losing this badly right now. That's a lot of rocket bots. 23 rocket bots, dude. Rocket bots are like really good in the early game and then like fall off in the mid game. So like this is like the time when they're like the best. And when you get a horde of them, they, they feel really unstoppable. If you but that's with uh with good micro, you know. Nah, these 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 bases are getting wiped out right now. That 14 mass per second mechs going down feels really bad. That was their T2 on the front line. The opposite side already has their T2s, which give 14 metal per second, which is very good, compared to the back lines, which only give 8. Uh, looks like someone dropped from the game. Uh, I believe this player had to take over this bottom base, most likely, I think. It looks like it. I actually don't rem I can't remember. <laughs> I can't remember who was playing up in these areas. But nah, it's not looking great for the right. Initially, I favored the right side, especially with these calm explosions, but the the play, the other calm explosions in the middle and the top outweighed it, and now it's gonna, gonna go be in the left side's favor, obviously. But, you know, high-level players, they can make comebacks, like, and I think they do it all the time, so <laughs> we might see... Oh, wait, we got our shurikens finally showing up. Shurikens and Fiends, T2 push, perhaps? This Calm might go down. Those Fiends are gonna get on top of him. I think that's gonna go down. Fiends do a lot of damage. Ooh, he missed that D-Gun. Dude, that's really close. He hit 0% for a moment, but he's gonna go down, dude. Ooh, and the dogs are out. Who let the dogs out? <laughs> Ooh, Captain Jack Sparrow is sending a Blitz Wave. And I don't know if they have enough here. These blitzes need to keep moving forward. The hill is getting in their way, giving the the right side a little bit of time to deal with this, but those blitzes are too close to the base already. These units are... Oh my god, that was an amazing EMP, dude. He just EMP'd like 80% of those blitzes, dude. That was a crazy EMP. Dude, high-level players, man. They, they make use of EMPs so well. I, I just personally don't like using EMPs, like the uh, spy bots. That's what that was. That was a spy bot. Uh, that detonated and saved that. That was that was crazy. Yeah, <laughs> say that for the other spectators. Dude, that was like such a good um, spy bot. It really saved this base. Save these uh, T two mexes here. I see up here. It looks very passive. Oh, he has, still hasn't built that mex back yet. He's getting T twos, but I would like if you just build that first. You know. Uh, he's also going for the Geo, T2 Geo, which is more efficient than Fusion. So, he's teching up right now, that's why he's been very passive. This minefield is going to cover him. Looks like he wanted to like wall off and just minefield up and then <laughs> go T2, like, feels good, man. He's been on T2 for a while, but uh, he's not gotten his mechs T2'd yet. So that means he's going to be falling behind and, you know, 
if you're gonna attack, you might as well get ahead with your eco. If you're gonna be greedy, be greedy. But I think he was uh, forced to defend when everyone was dying down here. How many times does Flash have to rebuild? Yeah, I, I think that's a trend. I, recently, I've been seeing uh, like the games I've watched of Flash. He just gets annihilated. I think people just focus him down, <laughs> and he has to rebuild. Where is he getting these units from? I think someone might be giving these uh, units to him because I don't see a factory for him. Oh, he's probably resing them. Looks like he's doing a combination of resing and maybe he's gotten units from people. Yeah, someone gave 25 units to Flash. He was given those units. Ooh, we got a massive air force here. There's no anti-air here. This base is going down. <laughs> this is a rip. No anti-air, 17 minutes, your T2. You need to build a flak as soon as you get like your T2 mexes up. Although I guess he's just too far behind, focused on fighting a lot. I don't know, these, uh, these, oh no, that's even worse. I was like, maybe he should have wiped his base first, but no, going for the fusions at this point in the game is so much better. Where's the Air Force? Oh my god, there's just fire screen coverage by the thing. Oh, he's even splitting, he's splitting his gunships? Because he's so confident he can win? What's he doing? Is he coming back? Oh my god, this, this is disgusting, dude. Disgusting gunships, dude. Absolutely disgusting. I dare say that that is game for this round. I think the left side just won this. Gunships, you gotta have AA, you gotta have flak. You get a T2 engineer out, uh, you can get a uh, T2 flak. Yeah, they're calling for resigns now. I don't think they can come back. The entirety of this bottom side is now uh, wiped, and they haven't even taken out the gunships, so... Not good. They need flak desperately. I still don't see that much air force here, and there's still fire screen coverage, and they're still making more fighters over here. Yeah, I don't think this is going well for the left, uh, right side. Yeah, these gunships are just gonna go uncontested. Absolutely uncontested. There's no anti-air anywhere. That was an interesting um, tech switch because, I mean, this player was playing air, but this he was frontline and he went gunships. Very interesting. Definitely high rated. You know, he's red. He's 41 rated. Taking advantage of the enemy's uh, lack of anti-air. The tech switch is just so strong, it seems. Yeah, that's game. All right. Thanks for watching. Hopefully um, you found this high level game. <laughs> Who wrote this? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I wrote that. <laughs> All right. Um, thanks for watching. Hopefully you found this uh, high level game interesting and I'll probably post this. It was a decent game. Fortunately, it was a uh, kind of one sided after uh, like the early game was one-sided but you know high level interesting stuff thanks for watching